हेलो स्टूडेंट फॉर द कोर्स ऑफ फिजिक्स ऑफ लीनियर एंड नॉन लीनियर ऑप्टिकल वेब गाइड्स टुडे वी हैव लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स एंड टुडे वी विल गोइंग टू डिस्कस द लाइट गाइडेंस इन स्टेप इंडेक्स फाइवर फॉर ए रे व्हिच वी कॉल्ड स्क्यू रे एंड देन द वी पैरामीटर एंड देन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिस्क्रिट रेस सो टुडे लेक्चर नंबर सिक्स so in the previous class if you remember we calculate the for meridional ray this was the structure so let me write it once again n1 is the refractive index of the core and n2 is the refractive index of the cladding and we calculate the acceptance angle this is i this was theta and we calculated the acceptance angle and it was sin ic equal to na divided by small na where small na is a re refractive index of this medium where the waveguide or the fiber is placed and na we call the numerical aperture whose value was in 1 square minus in 2 square whole to the power half and then we find that ic ic is sin inverse of n a divided by small n a and that is for meridional ray please remember meridional ray is the ray which can passes through the axis so here for example it is passing through the axis and when it again make a reflection then it will again crosses will cross the axis here at this point and so on so today we will going to learn how to calculate this quantity ic which is the uh, acceptance angle so also we draw this that basically there is a region there is a solid angle and all the rays that is falling in this solid angle in principle should pass through this this angle was ic and that is for meridional ray now we will do we will going to calculate the same thing for skew rays calculation of acceptance angle ic well this is a bit tricky because the geometry is not straight forward first we need to understand the geometry so let me first draw the geometry very carefully so this is the fiber structure three dimensional fiber structure we have have a axis like this and at some point here say p this is also some point p 
the light is falling like this. and then refract it with this interface let me extend this part so this this is the the fiber wall so it is refracted in the fiber wall so this ang angle is i So, this angle is our theta and now it is at this point q which is over the fiber surface it is reflecting and it goes in this way. So, if I join this point I will have like this a plane like this here and also a parallel line if I draw I should have something like this. So, let me call this point T, this point S and this is the angle alpha this alpha angle is very very important because we find at the end of the day that uh, ic which is the acceptance angle will be related to this alpha this angle then this angle obviously will be alpha and suppose this angle is phi this angle is phi and it is again reflected so this angle should be phi as well let us put the name here so this is my p this is say r this point is st and i have a a triangle p sub triangle here Okay. So, now try to understand how to correlate this theta with i with this phi. So, my goal is to correlate the incident angle i with the phi to find out what is the acceptance angle. So, let us start with uh, the equation which directly tells us how i and theta is correlated. So, first we have n a sin i is equal to n 1 sin theta snail's law I apply just the snail's law and mind it this is the core of the fiber. So, refractive index of the fiber is n 1. Then let us consider angle there are many triangles are there. So, let me first consider P Q S P Q and S this angle is phi. So, it is associated with phi. So, if I draw in a simpler manner so that we can understand which angle is phi it should be phi this is the point P this is the point Q and this is the point S. Well, from here I can have cos phi because mind it I need to correlate with i and phi. So, whatever the geometry I have from that I need to correlate with i and phi. So, that precisely my goal and I like to do I will try to do that with whatever the uh, ray geometry I am having. So, these are, these are the rays. So, let us put the ray sign. So, cos phi should be S q divided by P q. Okay. So, this information I have. 
so let us consider another angle another triangle so triangle say this triangle which is now uh, shaded so s t q from the triangle s t q i can have cos alpha which is equal to s q divided by t q mind it angle s q t is equal to alpha here so this angle is alpha this angle is alpha ok so next i will consider another triangle and this triangle should be p q and t so and p q and t from p q and t i can have another expression which is sin theta is equal to that means this is my theta so sin theta should be equal to t q divided by this is t q divided by p q so i have three quantity in my hand one is cos theta one is cos alpha and another is sin theta so with these three i can correlate the angle theta and phi and the relationship with the theta and i is already here in this equation so i can eventually correlate i and phi that is my goal so let us let us just write cos phi whatever the cos phi i calculate cos phi is equal to sq divided by pq and i write it as sq divided by tq multiplied by tq divided by pq because tq tq will cancel out so finally i have sq divided by pq if i do then i have simply cos phi is equal to cos alpha sin theta so now i will going to use this expression here in this snell's law so let me write it once again the snell's law under critical condition that means it is a when try to note it when i increases then theta decreases when theta decreases then phi will going to increase and then at some point there will be an critical angle for which this phi become 90 degree and no light will be allowed after that because then the total internal reflection is not going to happen so that is precisely the condition we will going to find so at critical condition i can write na sin ic is equal to n1 sin theta c at critical condition i just replace i to ic and theta to theta c it is n1 because this relation now i have i can replace this sin theta in terms of cos so it should be cos of phi c divided by cos of alpha now n1 sin c since it is a critical condition can be written as can be written as n2 because since it is a critical condition so i i i don't it, it, here we should have a sin into sin another angle and that angle has to be 90 degree because it is a critical condition so then i can have 
sorry so this this angle phi c will be the critical condition so this angle so i i may i need to this is not theta c because i am considering the critical condition for so this angle will be phi c i am try to find out the critical condition for this angle which is phi this angle and it will be refracted to the cladding part and this refraction will happen when it be this angle phi will be greater than phi c so at critical condition this is the condition at critical condition this is the expression we have so from here i can write cos phi c is equal to 1 minus sin square phi c whole to the power half because cos phi c is sitting here so that's why i try to find out cos phi c in terms of n1 and n2 so it should be 1 minus n2 square divided by n1 square whole to the power half so finally i have n a sin i c is equal to n1 divided by cos of alpha then i have cos of phi c which i calculate here it should be 1 minus n2 square divided by n1 square whole to the power half if i put n1 inside then i have 1 divided by cos of alpha then n1 square minus n2 square whole to the power half please note it this thing is numerical aperture so i have eventually n a divided by cos of alpha well then sin i c should be equal to 1 divided by n a divided by small n a and then cos alpha this is the expression i find for skew ray obviously the ic should depends on alpha because this alpha is the angle related to where it is uh, where the uh, light is launched so if the alpha is zero that means the light is launched exactly at the axis point then whatever the equation i have this equation should, should merge with uh, the equation that we derive for meridional ray so this is for skew ray and if i write the same expression for so these two expression suggest that the ic of skew ray that means the acceptance angle of the skew ray should be greater than the acceptance angle ic of the meridional ray because why it is this because cos alpha is greater than equal to 1 because of this cos alpha as there is a restriction of the cos alpha so ic will always be ic for the skew ray 
will be always be greater than than the IC of the meridional ray. Okay, so uh, after that we will now learn another important concept called V parameter. V parameter. So, we already have an expression of numerical aperture we call any as n 1 square minus n 2 square whole to the power half. This is my numerical aperture. So, by definition V parameter is something like k 0 a multiplied by n a. For fiber a is radius of the core. So, whatever the core I am going to use it should have some kind of radius typically few 10 around 10 micron and uh, this a is basically that value and k 0 is the wave vector in, in, in free space. So, it should be 2 divided by lambda this is wave vector in free space. wave vector in free space. Well, then the V parameter is defined by definition it is 2 divided by lambda a n a if I write in terms of refractive index it should be whole to the power half. Now, what is the importance of the V parameter? Please note that the V parameter is a dimensionless quantity, there is no dimension. A is a length and lambda is also length. So, there should not be any kind of dimension of V. So, it is a dimensionless parameter first of all. And then if V is less than certain value, this value I am writing 2.405 there is there is a critical value 2.4 why is it this value is 2.405 we will discuss in our future classes. Then what happened the fiber is single mode behave like a single moded fiber single moded. So, what is the meaning of mode that also we will going to learn in this course, but here if I try to understand the mode in terms of rays then how many rays, how many different kind of rays can propagate through the fiber can be loosely considered as modes. Suppose this is the fiber structure and there are one way that I have one ray that is passing through like this and this angle whatever the angle I have I is less than I C S say this is I 1. So, I 1 is less than I C. So, one ray is passing. In the similar way I can also have another ray which I write this say this angle is I 2. I 2 is also considered also following the similar restriction that it should be less than I C. So, it, it can also propagate through the fiber like this. So, I can see that a fiber through the fiber there are a number of rays that can propagate. 
Now in optical fiber if I have, so if all the rays are considered to be one mode, then for blue line this is say mode 1, this is the blue line, this is mode 1. mode 2 this is red line and so on. Now the V parameter basically tells us that how many rays can propagate through this fiber. So here if I look very carefully to the expression of the V parameter it suggests that V is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda A n A. And if this value is less than 2.405, roughly 405, then only one ray can propagate and that, that is why this fiber is called the single mode. That is why one mode is propagate and this fiber is called single mode. This is the condition of single mode. If I, if I try to understand mode in, in terms of the ray picture. Now from this expression we can we can check that if lambda increases then we can reduce there is one way that uh, we can have the restriction over v less than uh, 2 point the value of v we can make less than 2.405 by just increasing lambda or you can decrease so if lambda increases then V decreases if A decreases then also V decreases and another parameter is still there n a if n a decreases then also v decreases. So, there are three different parameters using which we can reduce the value of the v so that whatever the waveguide we are using that waveguide can behave like a single moded waveguide. In many applications we require only one mode. So that is why this definition is very very important and once we have this definition we can have the idea how the V parameter which controls whether the waveguide should be a single moded waveguide or multi moded waveguide can be controlled by the external parameter. So lambda is the external parameter because you are launching the light with the wavelength of lambda. But A and N A are the geometry uh, dependent parameter, it depends on the geometry of the waveguide. So since it is depend on the geometry of the waveguide, we can prepare our waveguide with proper geometry so that we can allow only few modes, not many or even we can reduce this number of mode to 1 so that our, our waveguide can, can only support a single ray which is useful in few application. We will discuss this in detail when we discuss about the modes of the fiber. But beforehand it is uh, handy to understand uh, the, what is the value, what is the meaning of the V parameter and what is the definition rather of this V parameter at this stage. Okay, so V parameter, so let me write it down what we just mentioned, so V parameter determines the number of modes
supported by the fiber. Okay, next very important concept which is discrete ray. So, we understand so far that this is the geometry of the fiber. So, I have refractive index N1, I have refractive index N2 and N2. If I draw the refractive index, it should be like this. And this is the axis of the fiber. Several time we draw this. And we have a range of incidence angle here. This value is the IC. And in principle, in principle, whatever the ray that falls here, if this angle I is less than IC, then there is no problem, it appears to be very straightforward that it can travel through the fiber. But is it really the case? Is it really the case that all the rays that falls with this angle I less than I C will pass through the fiber like this? this is another ray that is passing through the fiber. So, all the rays that should pass through the fiber is it true? The answer is not really. There are few selected rays that only pass through the fiber. So, in order to understand I will like to draw this first and then if time permits today then we will do the calculation as well. Otherwise, we will do the calculation in the next class. So, Suppose we have a okay, I need to draw it carefully. So, let me So, suppose this one ray it is inside the fiber I have a ray that is having experiencing total internal reflection at this point. So, this is A point A. So, this is point B and it, it is it is passing like this. Now, when the ray is passing through this to the fiber, then it should be associated with a wave front and this wave front should be perpendicular to the direction of the propagation and I can draw this dotted line like this. So, these are the wave front that is passing like this way. So, when the wave front is passing like this, so when the ray is coming here, then after bouncing I can have this wave front here. So, let me call this point as point C and this angle which is equal to this angle which is equal to this angle is called phi. this is D. So, and this is say ray O. So, this is the geometry. So, ray O A is perpendicular to the face point.
phase front. which is defined as a dotted line. Now point if the ray is propagating then in order to propagate one condition should should follow that every time point A and C should be in same phase. Then only we have a constructive interference and the ray will going to sustain. Otherwise, there will be destructive interference and it will not going to sustain over a long run. So, that is the important thing here and we are going to calculate that. So, what is the path difference? So, path difference delta is equal to n 1 a b plus b c a b plus b c that is the. So, if I write in terms of phi it should be cos phi we know because this is d. So, this this a say a n. So, a n is d. So, I can write the cos phi in terms of d and this a b. So, it is a b. Next a b is here. So, next we need to find out what is the a c. So, from so from triangle a b c whatever the triangle we have here a b c I can have another expression which is cos of 2 phi is equal to B c because this angle is 2 phi. So, it should be B c divided by A b because angle A c b is 90 degree divided by A b as angle A C B is pi by 2. Okay, so, uh, now I, I can also have A B and B C in this equation. So, I can write that cos of 2 phi plus 1 is equal to B C plus A B divided by A B just add 1. So, I have B C divided by A B and then I add 1. So, now this B C by A B I can write in terms of part difference it should be delta divided by N 1 whole divided by A B. So, cos of 2 phi plus 1 is eventually delta n 1 and a b I already figure out here in terms of cos theta cos phi. So, I can write it as cos phi divided by d because cos phi was d divided by a b. Okay, this quantity is nothing but cos a square phi which 2 cos a square phi rather which is equal to delta of n 1 cos phi divided by d. So, 1 cos phi will cancel out. So, I have 
2 of cos phi is 2 of cos phi n 1 d is equal to delta the part difference 2 of cos phi n 1 d is equal to delta. Now, for constructive interference as I mentioned earlier the part difference has to be the integer multiple of lambda. So, here I have some discretization where m is 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, it is a discrete value. So, if that is the case I can have that cos of phi I need to put a discrete value m here is equal to m in place of delta I just write m of lambda divided by 2 n 1 d which gives me that phi of m which is the angle reflected by the fiber is cos inverse of m of lambda whole divided by 2 of n 1 a. That means, the, the, the angle whatever what is phi? Phi is this angle, this angle is phi. So, this angle is now discretized in order to uh, have the interference condition not all the angles are allowed. So, that means, that means this angle phi m it depend on certain values. If this is allowed then continuously if I change it will not going to allow. So, again another phi m m 1 will allow. So, for example, this is phi m 1 this is so that means phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 these are few discrete angles. discrete angles and due to these discrete angles only few discrete rays that are allowed to pass through this system not all the rays. Well, today I like to uh, conclude my class here. So, uh, today we cover uh, two important concept one is the V parameter and also the physical concept that how a discrete ray uh, can propagate through the through the fibers. So, with this note uh, I conclude. So, next class we will start with another concept called the cutoff wavelength. So, thank you for your attention. See you in the next class.